You guys remember this? Remember when NZXT decided, we're gonna build motherboards now? And it didn't quite go as well as they had planned. Well, they're continuing with their new N7B550 motherboard. One that I was a little bit skeptical to take a look at. But now that I've had a chance to kind of take a look at it already off camera and kind of see some of the build features and the changes they've made, I'm kind of looking forward to this one. All right, so I kind of skipped the unboxing on this one because what's in the box is extremely basic. So you get your quick start guide and manual here, um, which is, you know, I wish they had just stuck to the traditional book, but whatever, that's fine. M.2 uh, drive hold down screws right there. You get four SATA cables. Two of them are double 180s, uh, and then two of them are 180s with a 90. And then you get your antennas. So what I like about this is a lot of companies now have started moving on to the antenna extension, if you will, which I get works well for reception and such. I just hate having loose wires hanging off the back of your motherboard that you then have to route up somewhere that's always falling over and stuff. So these do just screw into the back side of the motherboard, just like you would always expect to see. They do swivel upward, that way you can keep the antenna upright. And then you've got obviously your uh, multiple bands on here. So it'll do Wi-Fi 6E, by the way. This is a Wi-Fi 6E enabled motherboard. Uh, it does have a Realtek NIC in there if you're wondering about the ethernet. Uh, and it obviously has Bluetooth. So that's why you have your multiple antennas and such. You have your Bluetooth radio, you have your Wi-Fi radio. And uh, I'm just happy to see that they directly connect to the motherboard. I've never personally had an issue with uh, the antennas that attach to the motherboard versus the wired ones that you could stick up on top of your case or on your desk or something. So that's all that comes in the uh, the box. Nothing too crazy, no, not a bunch of extra stickers and a bunch of crap that you're just not gonna use. In fact, it doesn't even have a driver disc. At least they're not giving you the CD coaster anymore that you can put your cup on. So let's go ahead and talk about the build quality and some of the changes here. One of the issues that many people had, myself included, with the N7, which I, it's interesting to me that they're still calling it an N7, when it really is an entirely different motherboard, even though this is Intel and that's AMD. This is their first AMD board, by the way. I wanna talk about some of the physical changes that they made because of the fact that, if you remember my very first video where I took a look, oh wow, and the, this one started to discolor over time too, because it is white. If you, take, if you remember my very first video, I talked about how I cut the absolute crap out of myself. I think Phil remembers, I was bleeding all over the place because the metal is sort of sharp. The bottom side, not too much in terms of, I mean, some of these areas here have some really high um, traces that stick up and can cut you. But the biggest issue for me, quite honestly, was the way that these covers removed. So this is just the chipset. I hope I don't cut myself again, but I need to demonstrate. So it's just a little chipset cover here, which you don't technically need to take off. It's just showing you the way it attaches. It's got the little ball nubbins right there. A little bit of rubber on there to protect it from scratching. This is obviously where you'd get to like your M.2s and stuff. So you would have to stick your fingernail in there and pull it out. So there's access to one of the M.2s. You had another one right here, and I'm trying not to rip my fingernail back. That's just a cover for continuity. There's nothing under there. So that's just there to make it look like, well, if you got one on the bottom, you should have one on the top. And then you got this little cover here, which exposes your other M.2. And then it was trying to take this other cover off, which I think is screwed down. Yes, it is screwed down, so I'm not gonna go yanking on that. That is where I ended up cutting myself. Now here's the biggest problem people had with the original N7. The OEM for that, or the brand that makes the motherboard for NZXT, is EPS. How many of you just went, whoo? What's an EPS? Isn't that power for your CPU? EPS is a brand that was much more known for making just basic workstation motherboards, no frills, didn't really have a whole lot of experience, if you will, in building Z390 chipsets that are designed for overclocking on ninth gen Intel and having a feature set or BIOS that could back it up, or heck, even build quality, because I'm gonna tell you right now, this is one of the flimsiest motherboards we ever reviewed. That's not the case for the B550 motherboard, and I really hope they bring the changes they integrated into the new N7 B550 into the Intel chop, Intel chop sets as well. All right, first things first, I told you I hated these covers, right? Guess what? These are magnetic. They just got this little tab right here that goes in to the underside and you can see the little nubbin right there. That's the magnet. So when you're done, you just get it into the groove. And it's, there you go, magnet. Same thing with this one. So you can get your M.2s, really simple, really easy. 
they're magnetized. Now, you still don't have active cooling when it comes to the M.2. This is something I would have liked to have seen NZXT incorporate. We know M.2 drives get hot. We also know that if they get too hot, they throttle. So here is an M.2 drive right here. You can see a little bit of uh, grease still on there from the motherboard I took it out of that has uh, thermal pads on there. Having thermal pads properly touch the NAND and the controller and a little cover to create a, a, an additional heat spreader can help with temperatures. It doesn't mean it's going to. There's more that's involved in that. Like for instance, is the underside being cooled? See, we have chips on the bottom side right here underneath the sticker. So if you're only cooling one side of it and the other, other side is getting hot, it can still thermal throttle. So you can see the NZXT has still not incorporated any sort of active cooling. Now the OEM for this motherboard is ASRock. So they moved on to a brand that's obviously much more known. ASRock's been kind of quiet lately though. They don't advertise as hard as say MSI or ASUS um, or Gigabyte. They, ASRock for the longest time had some of the best mid-range mainstream motherboards that you could buy. You guys remember the Extreme 4? That was a motherboard back for FX that was just like completely unbeatable in terms of its value set, its feature set, and just its reliability given those factors taken into account. So I would have liked to have seen them add some sort of an M.2 active cooling to this. In fact, what I need to do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and install it on this motherboard because of the fact that I am going to also be running this motherboard um, for a while on our test bench, which is what test benches are for, so that we can just get a real good sense of what its long-term reliability is gonna be like. The other thing that they uh, really kind of kept in tradition is the full cover for the motherboard to make it look nice and pretty. And I'm not gonna bother taking the full cover off because again, it is screwed in from the bottom side. But this does give you a nice clean aesthetic to look at. So they do come in white and they do come in black. This is the black one here. And I threw on our black Amazon cooler with the black NZXT fan because I thought it just really kind of keeps that whole murdered out theme looking uh, or going, which looks really nice. But the layout makes a whole lot of sense. So in terms of PCI or PCI Express, it is a PCI Express Gen 4 16X on the top slot. And it does have a PCIe Gen 3 16X uh, full size. So you have two full size PCI Express ports. It does support both Crossfire and Quadfire if you're running really old graphics cards, because we all know that's technology nobody uses anymore. And then you've got uh, additional PCI Express 1X right here um, so that you can use things like capture cards, sound cards or whatever is gonna end up using that particular slot. But in terms of the arrangement, it makes a lot of sense. So you've got your eight pin PCIe power, or eight pin EPS power for your CPU, plus a supplemental four pin. If you're gonna be using a high core count CPU, we do have a 5900X in here, so I would probably use both for the, for the sake of just knowing we have enough power. CPU header right next to that. Over here, we have our AIO pump, and I'm glad to see this up here at the top. I'm so sick of brands that will put it right next to the socket because your power cable is not two inches long. So having it up top means you can route it with cables that are already going through your motherboard tray and back out on top to have nice, neat, logical cable manage routing. You have the retention of their um, proprietary RGB headers. So we'll kind of show you that this here real quick. That's, that existed on the originals as well. Because NZXT does have, and where did I put it? Here we go. Because NZXT does have their NZXT cam, if you're using those headers, you won't necessarily need the control box that comes with cam, meaning less wires, less things to manage, and a much more simple way of wiring up their RGB. The NZXT fans, as you can see on the bottom, do have an in and an out, so they have daisy chainable fans, which means if you're using one of the uh, wires that come with the, the fans themselves, you can plug the proprietary in right into the motherboard, or out, I should say, right to the middle of the board. You do have two headers here. Take this, put it to the inside of your fan, in, not inside the fan, but the inside of the fan. Plug that in, and now this fan will have RGB connected to the motherboard without having to have anything extra to work it. But Jay, I don't have NZXT cam, and I don't want to use NZXT cam. Well, right here at the bottom, you've got your standard 12 volt uh, non-adjustable RGB, which is the white and then a standard five volt ARGB three pin to the left of that, which is in the gray. So you can use whatever other RGB, which is the more standard headers, if you want. But if you're using NZXT fans and cam, then you can daisy chain these for having one connection or up to two if you wanna use LED strips and stuff, just to keep the wiring nice and neat and clutter free. When it comes to other fan headers, 
We've got two more to the right of that, right over here. These are our chassis headers. So I like that we have a lot happening on the top side. 24 pin power plug plus USB-C right next to it. Six SATA six gigabit per second ports. And then we have a USB 3.0 on either side of it. If I was to make an arrangement suggestion, I'm sure there's some sort of a PCB reason why they didn't. I would have liked to have seen both USB 3.0 next to each other and then maybe move the SATA 6 down. That way you have the plugs right next to each other, making it easier to cable manage rather than having those separated. Bottom, we do have surface mounted buttons. We have a reset and a power switch. And then moving this way, we have three more system fan headers, three USB 2.0 headers. Do you know how many brands are starting to omit USB 2.0 headers from their motherboards entirely? having none whatsoever, meaning you have to run some sort of an internal USB hub, uh, which they do make where it can turn a USB 3 into USB uh, 2 and then you can have like six of them or eight of them. Having three of those is nice because there's a lot of stuff, whether it be AIOs or if you're using the cam header, you know, box itself. USB 2 headers are how almost all these RGB plugs or, or boxes connect to the motherboard to communicate. Having one is never enough. Having three, well, that's awesome because even if you don't use them, you have them. And then as I already showed you right here, we have our uh, ARGB and standard RGB, and then we have our front audio, which nobody should ever use because it's analog and extremely noisy. So with that said, let's go ahead and get it fired up. And I'm curious about the BIOS functions. I wanna see what BIOS features are in here, especially with AMD having very specific, very proprietary functions like precision boost overdrive, per core overclocking, Sometimes you can do per core as well as all core overclocking separate. I'm curious as to whether any of that made its way into the N7B550. So here we go. Here's the fan hooked up to uh, the cam header. And as you can see, it defaults to white, which is nice to see, not rainbow puke like so many brands out there. Anyway, here's the BIOS. First things first, it's extremely clean, like almost suspiciously clean. You know, it's kind of like if weight if the, how heavy something is indicates quality, how cluttered a BIOS is almost makes you feel like that gives you features, I guess. But if they give us what we care about and cut the rest of the crap, I'm okay with that. Let's look at the overclocking tab. Overclock mode bus speed auto. So that's gonna be like our uh, base clock right there. So B clock, 100 is default. SOC and uncore OC mode. So that's kind of neat. And if you, don't wanna know, if you wanna know what a feature does, it tells you right over here on the right. And it looks like it's a description that actually means something. Whereas other motherboard manufacturer brands, I don't wanna necessarily name them, will be like, click here to tell you what feature does. B clock adjusts the B clock. So here it's telling you SOC and uncore mode is AMD overclocking setup forces CPU SOC uncore components, e.g. the Infinity Fabric and memory and integrated graphics to run at their maximum specified frequencies at all times. So by enabling that, we're just telling it, go highest frequency allowed. Now there's other things that are gonna determine what makes it allowed, but that's highest frequency allowed. So we've also got uh, VDDP voltage, uh, CCD voltage, which is kind of nice, DRAM setting. So XMP, here is our 3200 megahertz. It immediately changes everything, changes our voltage, changes our core clock or our, our frequency for the RAM. Infinity fabric and dividers. So you can leave that at auto, which is fine. If we go over here and since we set our uncore to, uh, to enabled, which makes it run at its maximum setting, it's gonna run a maximum setting of one half of what the RAM is set to. So that, that frequency ratio of one half gets you the best Infinity Fabric performance. So it's gonna be running at 1600 megahertz because that's half of 3200 when it's set to auto. Or you could manually set it to 1800, but then you created a weird um, offset there, which isn't recommended. So leave it at auto unless you're going higher than 4000 megahertz, which I don't actually recommend, and then leave it at 1800 megahertz. Oh my God. Overclocking profiles that you can activate from the overclocking tab. Why has nobody else thought of this before? Yeah, I know this existed in, the, in their old, old BIOS and stuff. It's just other brands are still like, let's go all the way over here, way off to the right, so that you can enable a profile that you then have to go all the way over to the left to start tweaking. Oh look, res resize bar support. So here it is, resizable bar is active in this BIOS, which is nice. Front panel HD, hey, look at that. This is how you can turn on and, and, or change the type of audio controller for the front panel. AMD PBS. And you mean rate, so this is where you need to set your RAIDs. Okay, we got RAID functionality here, PCIe and graphics lanes configuration. So you can change the configuration of the uh, lanes and how they're divided. AMD overclocking. 
All right, so this is interesting that it's not in the overclocking tab, but this is where you can start to figure out your eco mode, which is disabled, good. Precision boost overdrive. Let's go ahead and set this to enabled. And this gives us our power limits here, but I'm not seeing where it's giving us our offset in terms of frequency. So if I go to advanced, I bet you that's where it'll be. Oh yeah, right here. Max CPU clock override. 200 is as far as they're letting us go. That's kind of the standard with PBO. Here's a curve optimizer where you can, right? Positive, magnitude. Okay, so this is more just form, formulamatic, formumatic, formula, formula, formula stuff. Formulaic? Formulaic, whatever. I like formulamatic though. Formulamatic. <laughs> and then PBO limits, we can come in here and make these manual, right? So you could go in here and then start to over, or overdrive all this stuff manually if you want to. If you don't understand any of the scalers and stuff, I would just leave it on auto and then max CP boost clock override at 200 megahertz. What do we have for tools? SSD secure erase tool. Okay, so if you want to actually truly wipe your SSD, I guess you could try to do that here. Um, I don't know what sanitization of the drive means. Okay, that says format. So we'll not click that because it's got my OS on it. And then our BIOS instant flash tool. So if we had our, um, if we had a USB stick in here to do our BIOS flash, we could do that. And something else I wanna mention is this board does also have a BIOS flashback feature on the back of it itself. So if you have a system that won't boot because you borked the BIOS or you completely hammered it in some way by messing up settings and even a clear CMOS doesn't fix it, you can do a BIOS flashback from the backside of the motherboard without the system actually being booted, which is a nice function. And one of the things I was gonna say is this, C this motherboard doesn't have a CPU and a CPU optional header. So say if you're having two fans hooked up, right, for push-pull on an air cooler like this, if you want them both to operate the same RPM, which is what you want for the least amount of having a, a sort of cross drop or drop pressure across the, the fins, you'd want them to operate the same RPM. So this is saying that you can set the CPU fan and the water pump switch to either being CPU pan or pan, CPU fan or water pump. So that's kind of nice that you can adjust that. All right, and then it has its fan tuning software built in, which is where it would basically go through. It will talk to the fans that have an RPM wire and it will apply voltage. And as it applies voltage, it kind of monitors what the RPMs are and then it will learn here's the range of each fan attached to each header. So it can then start to smart control the fans. All right, so it's actually booting and I had to go ahead and plug in my uh, SATA SSD as well because the test bench it came off of, it put the bootloader on the SATA SSD, but the OS is on the MP600 because Windows, Windowsing. All right, so I downloaded Cam, and I know right now a lot of you are probably already groaning and like, I hate built-in software. And for those of you that are actually capable of understanding how some of this can actually help your system, we'll go ahead and move forward. So PC monitoring here, you can see your CPU usage, your GPU usage, RAM usage, network speed, both up and down, your storage capacity and what's used on it. And I also like that it shows your top processes, so you can see here what is uh, actually causing you know, any sort of slowdown or hog of your system. Cam is also really lightweight now versus what it used to be. I think the problem is with people that are groaning, they haven't used it in a long time. And yes, back in the day when it was more of a beta project, it was a very intensive resource hog. Uh, it's a lot leaner now than it used to be. But if you're using an NZXT motherboard, there's no reason why you shouldn't use Cam because it's how you control so many facets of your motherboard. For instance, here's the air fan. And by default, the lighting is white, like I said, and that's what the lighting will be if it's plugged into the RGB header at the top designed for NZXT's lighting system. But if you start changing the uh, settings right here, there you go, you can see now everything in CAM automatically controls any devices plugged into those headers without needing a control box for it, which is, in my opinion, cooling. This is this right here is already why I would use this particular piece of software with an with an NZXT motherboard because you can control the fan speeds and the curves right here. You don't have to go into the BIOS and start playing with like temperature thresholds and percentage threshold thresholds. You can just change it all right here. So for instance, the only fans we have plugged in right now are the CPU fan and then we also have um, this fan plugged into which I believe is our AIO. No, I think it's one of the chassis. Yeah, it looks like it's one of the chassis connectors. So you could go in here, you could rename it if you wanted, um, CPU air cooler, right? And now that we named it, we can change the profile if we want. So there's silent, performance, or custom. And then if you go custom, you can start changing the fan curve however you want it. So, I mean, if you don't see the benefit or the strength of having, you know, the ability of controlling your fan curves from software on your motherboard headers, then I don't know what to tell you. If you were running one of their digital power supplies from NZXT, um, you could also 
get information here on how many watts you're drawing. So if you ever wondered like, how many watts is my system pulling when I'm gaming? You could have this up on another monitor or in the background and then fire up your game and fully load your GPU and you could see exactly how many watts you're drawing from the wall. Um, same thing here with audio devices. If you have any sort of audio devices that are supported, you'd be able to go in here and fine tune the mixer and whatnot. And then for settings, you can change the account name and start cam with or without windows and it's all nice and easy. Now I'm using guest mode and one of the things that people are not happy about with cam is the fact that, well, you've got to make an account. Well, I've always used guest mode personally. Um, and as you can see right here, that's working just fine. That's pretty much all we're gonna talk about today. This is sort of a first look at their B550 motherboard. I'm gonna run this as our test bench now for a while with our 5900X to see how well it performs. So far, it's doing really well. The aesthetics are there. It looks better than it ever did. The functionality in terms of the way the little covers work already is just, this is what they had me at the cover, honestly. And the fact that this one, although it does come in white and black, just looks so good being all solid black like that with the black cooler, black fan, black GPU. Uh, I could see this being a really nice blacked out theme if that's what you were going for. So anyway, if you guys wanna take a look at the N7 motherboard, uh, check the description down below. You guys will find a link to the product webpage where you guys can go and learn more about it, pricing and all that. Pricing right now, time of making this video is about $229 for this motherboard. Although that might sound like a lot, to get a lot of the functionality that's in this motherboard from some of the other brands, we'll run you three, four, $500. Don't get me started on our current test bench motherboard for AMD, which was over $700. So anyway, if you guys wanna learn more about the N7 B550 motherboard, full specs of uh, memory compatibility, which by the way, I forgot to mention, does support uh, 4,600 plus megahertz on the memory. I have not personally run any AMD CPUs with memory that high. Um, but uh, yeah, compared to the N7, Z390 motherboard, they have come a long way, not just with a better OEM, but also better build quality, small functions like the little magnetic covers make me happy, NZXT seamlessly integrating with it and not taking up a whole bunch of resources on your system. Uh, it just makes me happy. So I'm curious, this board's only been around for a few weeks. I'm curious if any of you guys are actually running it. If you are, sound off in the comments below with what your experience has been like. That way um, we, can, we can hear how you guys feel about it. Phil's still running the camera and the light's still red, so I'm just still talking. Can I go now?